Hello my soccer universe, it's pouring outside and I'm providing a really stark contrast all Serie A here and I'm wearing Arsenal. Well, I decided I don't want to change the entire background here just for one single game, although I just realized I could have made two out of it. But you know, uh, I think let's make an entire video for whatever happened on this weekend and call it a domestic season and then we can focus fully on the Europa League and on the Champions League. And while I'm wearing Arsenal in front of the Serie A background, we'll start actually in France in, with the uh, Coupe de Ligue final. I have not seen many highlights. I saw PSG won against Lyon on penalties. I heard it was a rather drab affair, uh, rather, rather boring and surely was not helped. It's very late, but it's very late. Well, it was a red card card as well, I think. Uh, it was more or less Lyon holding out for the penalty shootout and then not making it. And in the end, they missed their last penalty. Um, and it was 4 4, and Saudi Arabia can pull it home and uh, give uh, PSG the domestic treble. Well, we'll see. I don't think we learned much about the Champions League, uh, except that Lyon can hang in there, and we need to see what Juve can do with that. We'll talk about Juve in a bit. And for PSG, uh, they cannot break down a defense. Well, fortunately, they're playing Atalanta, who is not necessarily known for their great defense. Let's talk of a Cup file. That actually I watched because uh, I was expecting, um, no, I wouldn't say high scoring, but I was, oh, I was expecting some goals and some goals were in there. It was in many ways the Borussia Dortmund final. Because uh, all the scorers played at one time for Borussia Dortmund and there were even, you know, Arsenal, I realized there are way too many Dortmund players that have been, you know, Dortmund, Arsenal, and if they didn't leave Arsenal, go somewhere else. Uh, it just doesn't seem, doesn't seem to make that percentage. I think Chelsea actually started quite well and the move that uh, led to Pulisic's uh, opening goal was a really uh, nicely played. I thought, oh, here we go, Arsenal's gonna break down because now they're chasing the game, um, leaving their shaky defense exposed and uh, Chelsea will hit them on the counter. But I have to say, after 15 minutes or so, I had the feeling Chelsea is not playing. Uh, they're not, I, I really thought Chelsea should now uh, go for it for a second and therefore kill off the game. Did not happen at all. I was really uh, surprised by that. And But I still thought that Chelsea will uh, hang on to this 1-0 lead. No. Uh, Aspilicueta Quetta is caught out of position. Um, pulls, was it uh, Pepe or Lacazette? Pulls him down in starting outside the box, but I really think the real uh, pole came inside the box. Clear penalty. I think even if it started outside, I never felt that this is not a penalty. And yeah, uh, Aubameyang steps up and scores the equalizer. And uh, the game heads to half time this way. But I still at this moment thought that um, I think Chelsea will gonna, is gonna do that. Um, however, I think one key moment in the second half, there were many ways that really tilted the game than in favor of Arsenal who probably put a little bit more effort in but were not necessarily the really better team at, at the way I saw it. I thought that both were not great on the day. Uh, maybe there's some uh, fatigue creeping into Chelsea now as well. Uh, fatigue will be something that will come back to. I think the first one was when Pulisic uh, gets through, takes a shot and just before that he pulls his hamstring has to be take, taken off and I think that took all the attacking momentum away from Chelsea. Um, the game, as I said, shifted and slightly towards our, our The next big moment then came when Pepe plays a pass onto Aubameyang, but I think in the build-up there was a clear foul on a Chelsea player in midfield. But what Aubameyang does then uh, to Zuma was just world-class. I mean, uh, he has, I think the ball is right and takes a left and takes a shot and puts it in. Uh, that was probably the best moment of the entire game. Yes, probably the goal should have been called back for foul. I understand, even if they looked at it and, at VAR, it is not a clear-cut error. This is now a judgment call and the referee uh, judged it uh, differently. And judgment call is basically what the next thing is also, and I think they, are, um, they did a mistake. Kovacic already got a yellow for tripping, maybe you can give this uh, to set the tone. But honestly, the yellow card, the second yellow card that he got 
I found a little weird because it was not in any way um, outrageous what he did deserving of a yellow card and surely not enough to get uh, sent off for yellow red. Kovacic, uh, despite I am not a huge fan, but there's one big connection. He was born in Linz to Croatian parents, of course, and he played in the youth for Lask, so uh, he's probably the best Lask player of all time. Maybe we'll see. He played for Inter, <laughs> he played for Real Madrid, and now he played. Uh, he plays for Chelsea, so that's quite the career. I think with that, uh, I mean, Pedro already getting in for Pulisic did not provide the spark that you get from Pulisic. Then a man down, uh, two contentious referee decisions. Chelsea uh, seemed to be ma mailing it in and even though uh, at the end they really had some um, op uh, opportunities uh, to put, especially in, st in stoppage time, there were a few uh, cases where I thought play the pass faster, um, slam it home, anything, try some something, but they were too over complicated and Arsenal actually had not that tough of a time um, of getting the FA Cup win. And yeah, Pedro had needed a lengthy um, treatment on the field, so it went on forever and ever and ever. I didn't even watch the trophy ceremony. Um, I think Arsenal deserved to win. Uh, however, it also has to be said that um, Chelsea did not show all that much. So yeah, that ends the domestic season in England. Yes, we have the playoff, but you know, I'm talking mostly Premier League and top competition in my channel. Okay, Serie A, final match day of Serie, of Serie A. Um, I have to say it was a little un underwhelming. Um, I really looked forward to watching Atalanta play Inter, but that game was done and dusted relatively quickly uh, in favor of Inter, which I didn't... Nah, it's not that I didn't expect, because I already saw after the great Juve game, Atalanta was slowly, slowly looking not that all right anymore. D'Ambrosio after a corner uh, had, has been completely un uh, uh, unmarked goalkeeper somewhere. Uh, out and then uh, Golini needs to be replaced with Sport, Sport Yellow. Atalanta tries a little bit, Ashley Young hits them on the counter. Um, wonderful shot. 2 0 after 20, 20 minutes. Atalanta didn't get a shot of goal for the rest of the game. It uh, was rather disappointing. So Inter finishes in second place. That, that was clear. And they finished only second place with one point ahead of Juve, who, despite new kit, well, let's remember that, and a big trophy ceremony, lose at home to Roma. 3 1. I couldn't really believe it. Yes, uh, when you see the lineup, you can't believe it because I mean, there was no Ronaldo, there was no Dybala. Basically, a second string squad where they actually really tried now to save their energies for the Champions League. So, maybe in that sense, it was not all that uh, unexpected. Uh, the goals Igo in gets an early goal for Juve, Kalinic equalizes, and Perotti. Scores to the second one after a really nice uh, Zaniolo assist. Zaniolo getting a little bit wrenched, remember, in the first game against the UA, he got badly injured. Um, Napoli Lazio is notable because Immobile gets the equalizer in the 22nd, which is 36th goal of the season, equaling Iguain's record. Um, I actually expected them to get a second one, but Napoli actually showed up to play. Uh, Ruiz and Insigne penalty, and then a nice shot by Politano, and quite some scuffle at the end. Uh, tempers were f going high because uh, Lazio maybe put a little bit too much effort in there, and Napoli, who still have to play at the Champions League, definitely did not like that. The big uh, story there is Insigne got injured and probably is out for the match against Barcelona, which kind of hurts them. Um, then uh, Milan against Gallieri. Finally, Milan gets a clean sheet. The first goal <laughs> fell through Klavan. It was a shot by uh, Leao, who comes off the post and goes into the net. Uh, Ibrahimovic misses a penalty. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, Ibra, what, what are they doing? But then, uh, really good shot in the 55th, make it 2 0. Castillejo shortly after makes it 3 0. Game done and dusted. Milan finishes on high note, unbeaten since Corona restart. Um, Slatan scoring again 10 goals in just half the season. So I have to say I am quite impressed. I am happy that Pioli got the new contract. Um, not so sure if it, you know, keeping Slatan around, I don't know now the contract, but I think it should be very incentive laden. Um, 
he is after all 38 but he contributed hugely to getting Milan where they are now so that he I'm happy that uh, they are where they are I'm now curious um, what reinforcements they can get in the transfer window if at all I heard that they are looking at Chiesa thanks to the Pioli connection and Chiesa is a player that I really 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 like uh, same thing I would like to have Tonali but you know the other players also but those would be two players that I would love to have at Milan for sure um, then it was all a uh, relegation battle and um, I started in 25th minute and it was all decided by that time um, and it was really as soon as Lecce something happened in, in the Lecce game uh, against Lecce it got compounded almost immediately at the same time um, at Genoa Genoa I need to learn Genoa 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 uh, Lugioni starts off the game with an own goal again similar like the uh, one uh, for uh, Milan where the ball hits the post and Lugioni puts it in, 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 so in the 11th minute in the 13th minute Sanabria at Genoa, Genoa will I ever learn this maybe by next season since now Genoa is staying up I can say makes it a uh, 1-0 so already off to a, to a, to a bad start then uh, in the 24th, Caprari scores for Parma, make it 2-0 in the 25th, Sanabria for Genoa makes it 2-0 uh, for Genoa and that is where I joined the party, uh, basically needing a five, or four goal swing, five goal swing, I needed a win for Lecce and a draw for Genoa, as I said, for me Lecce was the way more entertaining team, I think from what I saw from Genoa, they are a traditional team, don't get me wrong, in my ideal Serie A, Genoa would be in there. But from what I've seen, I think Lecce would have deserved more than Genoa to stay in. But then again, Genoa beat Lecce and I think this is uh, ultimately undoing. And this is what you actually also would like, that the head-to-head -head decides where things are going. Um, Lecce though comes back, uh, they score through Bargain in the 40th, the 1-2. Uh, At the same moment, Verona had a glorious chance where they just roll it back to the keeper in, in a way to make the similar score and I mean that would, would have been excitement, exciting but yeah uh, Genoa makes it 3-0 and doesn't look back uh, it doesn't matter that Lecce gets the equalizer right after the half Cornelius puts Parma back in, in, in the lead Inglese adds another one and La Padula just uh, cosmetics 3-4 Parma was clinically show, showed up uh, Verona I have to say they tried but they surely didn't put in their last effort however there was a yellow red given for Genoa Romero uh, and then in stoppage time uh, scafuffle again and two red red cards so I mean there was some stuff happening I saw Verona in the last 20 minutes having some half chances or, or so on but it was never enough to threaten Genoa's win and Genoa is the last team to stay in. You see the other results with Bologna Torino 1 1, with Sassuolo losing at home to Udine, which I, I found curious. And I think uh, we also didn't talk about Spal Fiorentina 1 3 um, and Brescia Sampdoria 1 1. So the final table, the top four were set for ages, as were the next three. So the Europa League spots, we know that Roma and Napoli are in the Europa League. Milan needs to play qualification. Don't like that one a whole lot. Uh, Udine moves up a little bit and then the relegated teams it looks clearer than it actually was but you know four points we have uh, Lecce, Brescia and Spal are going down uh, given that we have two southern teams coming up two northern teams going down I really hate Brescia going down and Spal because I really like their jerseys to be honest uh, but you know it, it gets a little bit more evenly distributed we know that Serie A is very north heavy. Um, as for the final uh, table, it's only one point between Juve and Inter. That kind of hurt, although I think if there was something to play, Juve would not have lost the last game against Roma. Um, and yeah, Conte already making a little bit of a stink and... <sighs> Inter surely could have won this title. And again, I repeat it, Juve, nine in a row, can we let someone else? Please, I know you've been trying hard and Inter just was not serious enough, Lazio did not have a deep enough squad, uh, Milan uh, had a horror start, could never challenge as well in Napoli, uh, ate themselves up alive. 
Um, so I get, I guess. I should not talk to you, but I should talk to the rest of the. Can you keep it together? This Juve was the right for for the taking this time around. Can you keep it together ne ne next time? We probably could have a title race. We probably could see a, dif a, di a different champion. Yes, my Milan heart doesn't want to necessarily see into to become champ champions, but on the other side, it would be a breath of fresh air to see a new champion. And if it's not Milan, it be Atalanta. No, Roma and Atalanta. If Atalanta continues playing the great, I, I'm fully with them and I know uh, their relationships with my favorite, favorite teams are not all that great. But um, if you have an entertaining team, it's really fun to watch. Anyway, those are my few cents on the end of the Serie A season. Domestic seasons are over. Now we're going to Europe. I will make a little Europa League and Champions League preview and remind you where things stand uh, probably tomorrow. And then we'll go ahead with those games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!